Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. And this is going to be number 11 in the series of Python Bytes. And in this one we're going to be discussing using the console. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. Recently, Jacques Rabain commented on one of my earlier videos, one of my Python Effector videos, and he said that he didn't understand what the frame variable was doing. He wasn't sure if it was a static number or whether it was constantly changing. And that got me thinking because I haven't done a video yet on the console down here, and I think it's about time I did, so that's what we're about in this tutorial today. Now the console is a very, very useful ally, especially when it comes to debugging. So if you're working on some code and you've got some funny things going on on the screen and you're not sure what's happening, the best thing you can do is start printing variables. So for example, with the frame, let's just take that as an example. If we say print and we have to use parentheses in S26 and I believe in R25 and possibly even R24 of Cinema 4D, but some of the earlier versions, you may not need the brackets. But anyway, we do for the for S26. So if I just say print frame and then hit execute, we get a zero up here because the timeline is at zero. But if we play the timeline, we can see that frame is actually grabbing each individual frame along the timeline. And we're at currently at 30. So it's a constantly changing variable. Another thing you can do is also in single quotes, type the word frame and perhaps put a colon at the end and then comma frame. If we then clear out the console here and execute now, we can see that frame is 30. So we've labeled the actual variable that we're printing out. And if you're printing lots of different variables, it's a good habit to get into do this because otherwise it can get very confusing as to which one you're actually looking at at any given time. So we might as well continue and print a few more. We can say count colon, put a single quote at the end, comma, and then CNT. So we'll get the count variable. And let's print the first matrix from our matrix array. So if we say print ma square brackets zero, comma, ma brackets zero, and clear the console once again and hit execute. So now we're getting the frame variable, our count value, which of course is nine because we've got nine clones. And we're also getting ma zero. So the first matrix within our matrix array, all useful information, especially when it comes to debugging our code. So it's a useful thing to do. You know, that's the point. It's a very useful debugging tool because you might get a situation where perhaps you've said, if frame is greater than 90, x is equal to 10. Let's just say that, for example. And if we run the timeline and we print, let's just go print x, put x in single quotes and then say comma x. Let's see what happens now. Well, we never get X, do we? And the reason we never get X is because our timeline here, we've only got 90 frames, so we can never be greater than 90. Now, this is not the best example, but suppose you've got a similar situation where you've got an if statement, but for some strange reason, the code beneath the if statement doesn't seem to be actually doing anything. It seems a bit strange. Well, then printing is going to be useful to you because, again, here we didn't even reach the print statement. We will, of course, if we just make this 91. And then we'll return to zero, play the timeline. As soon as we hit 91, we're going to get 10. X is 10. So, you know, it's, it's useful from that point of view. Always print your variables if you've got anything strange going on or you're not getting the results that you expect. And if you do get a situation like this one where, you know, you're printing a, a variable, but you never actually see it, then the chances are you've either got some kind of a logical error going on or possibly a structural error. It could be that you've got the right code, but you've put it in the wrong place within the algorithm. 
So printing of variables can definitely help when it comes to solving these problems. And that's where your console is a very, very useful friend. So never overlook it. But anyway, that just about brings us to the end of this video because that's what I wanted to show you. And it's only a short one this week because I'm a little bit pushed for time. But anyway, I hope you've got something out of this one. And if you have and you've enjoyed the video, then please give it a like. And if you haven't already, then please subscribe to the channel. And of course, leave a comment and ring the bell. Wherever you happen to be on social media, then please, please share this video because all of this good stuff helps keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway... That about draws this one to a close, so I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.